Tony Bennett is the most unselfish performing artist today. Tony is truly a thrill to listen to, and on at least a couple of occasions, his generosity has broken the record. For instance, he hired me and my band to play a tour with him, and his respect for me told him to give me top billing. Well, to my knowledge, nobody ever gives away top billing, particularly when they are buying the package and paying top salaries. I don't really remember, I remember the first time I saw him. I, that's the best way of putting it. I, I never got over that show. It was so modern and so advanced. I had used to see all these stage shows in New York at the Paramount and the Capitol and the Roxy, and they used to have the bands and singers and entertainers on all these shows. And when I went to the Strand Theater one time, I saw Duke Ellington there. And he had the most incongruous setup of, of any orchestra I had ever seen. The musicians didn't have any music, and they were just kind of like a Salvador Dali setting, all in just kind of hanging in space. And then they, they played that way, and it was pretty modern and marvelous. How long ago was that? That was 1945. And, uh, well, you had been singing for a while. Oh, I was just a student at the time. I was going to an art school, and, and uh, I, I was very, very impressed. And, and then when I went into the service, right, I, I found myself listening to Duke Ellington records. And then I was always just kind of drawn to his music. And, and the... I really don't remember, you know, he's always been kind of a bit of a, a mystic to me. In what way? It, well, he, he, he was in touch with creating things more than any man I've ever met. He was the, the nearest extension of God that you could imagine, you know, because he just created. He created every day, kept writing. And one time I was in, in a very plush record shop in London with all classical music. And uh, the salesman said, uh, you're Mr. Bennett, aren't you? you know? So I said, yes. He said, well, oh, do you like classical music? I said, no, I, I, I love it, you know. So he said, well, he said, uh, who do you think produced the most music? And this is when Duke was alive. I said, I have no, I said Beethoven or Chopin or Bach or Mozart, you know, I, I didn't. So he said, he said, no, he said, it was Duke Ellington. He's actually produced more music than any musician than in, in the history of music. And in in so. Well. You, you started working with him. You don't recall exactly when you met him, or the first time you got together with him. But uh, had you been singing with big bands before you actually started doing the tours with him? Yes. Uh, I worked a lot with Basie and with Woody Herman. Right. And then... But you were never really a band singer, were you? No. Yeah. No, this was just a desire of mine because it was after the band business was finished and I was such a fan of the band business. And I still am that I always like to be involved with the different bands and uh, what was it like singing in front of the duke ellington band how was that experience different from other experiences you've had both with uh, the other feature bands that you did and also perhaps with the studio bands that you recorded with? right well i i consider the two best bands were basie and ellington and I always say that in my own philosophy that Basie symbolizes the earth and that Ellington is the sky <clears throat> because of that mystic thing about him. It, you know, he's just, it's like the very wind itself. And um, it, he was, Oh boy, it's so hard to, you know, really. When, when you uh, 
not when I say hard, I mean I'm not talking about failure now. I'm I'm speaking of so hard to find just the very right words to explain. Yeah, but it goes beyond. I, that there's something that we should all know about him. I mean, he loved people so much that uh, he extended himself so much and so unselfishness. You know, he he did it because he knew that this was really what should be done. I mean, a good example is one time I was on a taking a flight to Buffalo and he was going to Syracuse and the the uh, man at the gate said do, do you have any idea that Duke is on this other plane and uh, would you like to say hello to him because you have about 20 minutes I said well, I'd love it and uh, said, well go on the plane and say hello and Ella was there too he was on tour with Ella so I said hello to Ella and he just grabbed my arm and it took me to the back of the plane and there sitting in the back of the plane at nine o'clock in the morning was a 14 year old girl blind and she had a, a, a mouth piano uh, that she was playing and he said you know Tony Bennett and she said no I, I'm sorry she said you know I left my heart in San Francisco and she said oh yes yes and she, he said well you play it and he'll sing it and before you know it I was caught up in this thing of singing. I left my heart in San Francisco to a, a sold-out airplane, <laughs> and uh, the audience broke into a standing ovation and everything. And it, it, you see, it had nothing to do with money. It had nothing. To do, it was just a matter of a giving. He was a giving uh, person, and and thought so much of other people.